please subscribe to our channel, Pacific Front Untold, and be sure to leave a comment after watching a video. Sayonji Kimnochi, the last Gendo who made an impact on Imperial Japanese politics, was born in Kyoto in 1849. Biologically the son of Tokuda Jiji Kintsumi, Prince Sayonji was adopted into the Sayonji family, a relative and childless Kuge family of similar status. A Kuge was a Japanese aristocratic class that dominated the Japanese imperial court in Kyoto. As a young child, Seonji was appointed chamberlain and became a minor general of the right imperial guard. While his official duties were minimal, it was through this position Seonji became acquainted with and the playmate of the future Meiji Emperor Mutsuhito. At 19, Seonji commanded a Chosu and Satsuma samurai band during the Boshin Civil War. Through his successful efforts to pacify Ichigo, Seonji was main governor of that same province. However, deeply unsatisfied with an administrative position, Seonji received permission to leave his post and study abroad in France. During his time in Paris, Seonji attended Emile Akola's School for International Students and later graduated from the Sorbonne, the University of Paris, with a law degree. Sionji's close relationship with Akolas and extended European stay shaped his appreciation for Western culture and political thought. With ambitions to return to Japan and become a successful political figure, Sionji cultivated his image for Japan's future. Sionji believed Japan needed to become a constitutional monarchy and undergo a significant cultural shift to modernize, develop positive relationships with Western nations, and directly adopt Western thought and institutions. Despite leaving France in 1880, Seonji remained consistent in his core political beliefs for the rest of his career. Upon his return to Japan, Seonji lectured at the Meiji Law School and was involved with the popular rights movement. With similarly politically aligned friends, Seonji created Toyu Jiyu Shimbun, a newspaper that promoted a constitutional monarchy for Japan. Ultimately, Seonji's involvement in the newspaper became problematic for government officials who repeatedly requested his resignation. Despite his insistent refusal, an imperial order ultimately forced his resignation. Seonji's forced resignation marked the beginning of a prosperous political career. He formed a close political relationship with Ito Hirohumi, which was critical to his early career. Seonji served in both the second and third Ito cabinets and was the first member to join Ito's new political party, the Seyukai. Seonji briefly acted as prime minister during Ito's illness and would serve a second time after Ito's resignation. In 1912, the Meiji Emperor died and was succeeded by his heir the Taisho Emperor. That same year, Seonji was appointed Gendo by the Taisho Emperor. The Gendo consisted of a group of Chosu and Satsuma elders who had been leaders during the Meiji Restoration. As Gendo, Seonji served as the emperor's key advisor and was essential to the selection of the prime minister. Despite having been appointed Gendo, Seonji did not desire to bring this particular institution into Japan's future. For this reason, no additional member was ever appointed to the group, officially making Seonji Japan's last gendo. Seonji's political prominence continued to grow, and in 1919, he was Japan's delegate for the Paris Peace Conference. While Seonji endorsed Japan joining the League of Nations, he faced strong opposition from delegate Konoe Funimaro, who used the Japanese press to push against involvement in the League. As a compromise, Japan had two conditions for joining the League and signing the peace agreement, passing the racial equality clause and maintaining control of the Shandong Peninsula. While the racial equality clause was not approved, through a series of negotiations spearheaded by Seonji, Japan would retain its economic privileges in Shandong, but withdraw from the territory. Following this agreement, Japan signed the peace treaty and officially joined the League of Nations. As the Taisho Emperor's health declined, Seonji assumed partial responsibility for the Crown Prince's education and was assigned his primary advisor. 
Seonji's influence had a significant impact on the soon-to-be Hirohito Emperor. In 1921, the crown prince embarked on a tour of Europe. Although this trip faced strong opposition in Japan, Seonji and the other Gendo thought this experience would align Hirohito's politics with liberal and Gendo ideology. In 1926, Hirohito ascended the throne, and throughout his reign, the emperor would actively seek out Seonji's counsel on the numerous crises that would plague Japan in the coming years. However, Seonji's political influence would not last forever. In the 1930s, the right wing gained significant political power that threatened Seonji's constitutional ideology and diminished the Gendo's authority. On February 26, 1936, a series of assassinations were carried out against several senior liberal statesmen. While Seonji was an initial target in the assassination attempts, the insurgent officer in charge could not follow through with his orders due to qualms about killing the last Gendo. Despite Seonji's diminished political power, he continued to voice his opinions on the most pressing issues of the time. He expressed concerns about the rise of the right-wing party and the military's domination of domestic politics. At the end of his life, he denounced Japan's growing relationship with the Axis powers and remained steadfast in his desire for an Anglo-Japanese alliance. In 1937, Seonji said, What can Japan do in league with Italy and Germany? I have great doubts about that. I do not think it makes any sense. There is a great deal of sense if Japan should think of the United States to the east and Great Britain to the west. Just what sense is there in getting together with the first two countries? In November of 1940, Seonji Kimnochi died after a long and influential political career. As the last Gendo, his legacy would continue to influence Japanese politics long after his death. Although Seonji would never see Japan's entrance into World War II, his grim predictions for Japan's future would serve as testimony to his renowned wisdom and foresight.